treatment plan for each patient. Uh, now we're preparing the slide. Uh, we put the little solution on there and then we put the sample into the solution and then we place the cover slip on it and then we flip it over onto a piece of uh, towel paper to absorb the excess fluid and then we seal the slide uh, cover slip onto the slide. We harvest the sample from usually the, the most posterior teeth and the mandible on the lingual side and, and usually it's the second molar and there's usually a pocket there that we can take a, a little Gracie curette and uh, just scoop a, a sample of plaque as, as, down, as far down in the bottom of the sulcus as you can get. The deeper you go into the sulcus, the more anaerobic you are, and we want the most anaerobic bacteria we can find. But we find this is a very excellent site, and it represents the bacteria flora that's in this patient's mouth. Uh, here's the sample that we harvested. It's a um, little plaque sample. And we find that um, it, if we have a sticky plaque sample, it's usually spirochetes. There's one of the diseases that calls slime disease, and that's a spirochetal disease, and there's a reason why they call it slime, because when you take a plaque sample and it's slimy, it usually has spirochetes associated with it. Uh, now we're preparing to slide. Uh, we put a little solution on there, and then we put the sample into the solution, and then we place the cover slip on it, and then we flip it over onto a piece of uh, towel paper to absorb the excess fluid, and then we seal the slide uh, cover slip onto the slide. Here we are sealing the slide. It's like uh, nail polish. It just uh, take a little bit and just um, seal the edges all the way around the cover slip. And it creates an anaerobic environment for this bacteria. Now we're placing the slide and, and the bacteria sample into the microscope. Uh, many use a um, the power of 400, I use 1,000 with phase contrast and oil immersion because I like to be able to see even the smallest spirochetes. We find many samples that until you get to 1,000 power, you can't see the spirochetes. Uh, as far as the microscope is concerned, it's good to get a very good quality microscope with good lenses. Uh, it's better to cry once than cry many times if you buy the wrong microscope. And we found there is a difference between microscopes, and it's better by a very good quality microscope. So here we are observing the sample. We happen to have high definition camera uh, with 18 megapixels onto a high definition screen. And so we can actually take a 1,000 power microscope and we can blow it up uh, four times to 4,000 power or even 5,000 power, and we can actually see. Uh, the activities inside the macrophages or the immune cells. And it's not that it's any more resolution, but it's just larger. We can take with our electronics, we can actually blow the image 1,000 power up to 5,000 power and actually see it better, even though there's no more resolution. This is our screening form that we use. We can take notes on it. It's the type of bacteria, the type of movement, how fast and furious the movement is in spirochetes like uh, small, medium, and large, and we can actually get pretty detailed notes as to what the bacteria flora looks like at any particular time. And then every time we examine the patient in the future, we have a reference that we can compare and follow our progress and document our progress as we move to uh, a less virulent uh, plaque sample. Okay, we're gonna be doing a sample, a plaque sample, and we have a uh, Curette, it's a SG11 slash 112R9. And what it has is a, just like a little scoop on the end. And what I like to do is go to this, the lingual surface or the lingual pocket of the second molar, either right or left, the mandibular molar. So we're going to show you how to take a plaque sample. You usually like to go to the second molar, is that's the least likely for a patient to clean. Plus there's usually about a three to four millimeter pocket. And we go down into that area and we just harvest up a sample. And I don't know if you can see that, but there's a tiny little sample. And we put that on our microscopic slide. And if you want, you can flip this over and then go to another tooth. Or you can go to the other side of the arch and get a sample from the other side so that you get enough sample to look at it under the microscope. So I put a drop of our um, Aura Prep onto the slide. 
and then we just take the sample off the, in this case it's a very small sample, and we place it on the microscopic slide, and we take our cover slip and just drop the cover slip onto that sample, and we fold it over a paper towel, we're just going to turn this over onto the paper towel and just tamp it out, just pre press gently, and then we just dry off the sides. Then we have a sealant. And we're going to coat this the cover slip just enough to seal it because we've got anaerobes inside this cover slip so we don't want oxygen getting into the, between the cover slip and the slide. And this seals it off. I don't know if you can see that with the reflection. And so we have our sample and it's all sealed and it's ready to go to the microscope. Okay, here's the slide and uh, we're going to be putting it to the microscope. We slide it in and then we put a little bit of oil immersion oil on the, slip, on the cover slip because we're working at a thousand power with face contrast with the, with the oil immersion. And so there's our, our slide. And here's our microscope set up. It's set up with high definition. We've got an 18 megapixel uh, high definition camera to a high definition screen. And we're at 5,000 power. And here's an example of the little spore-like forms in the epithelial cells in this particular patient. So as we move around, we see a lot of spirochetes there, and they're moving very fast and furiously. So we consider this a very virulent case. So in these cases, we treat with antibiotics, heavy duty antibiotics, and laser surgery.